Hi, there are four sections of this course. In the beginning of our journey, we'll focus on kind of a speedrun trying to run the application and explain all the concepts behind the Nest.js. I named this section Course Introduction. In the second section, we'll add some business logic to our app and create some kind of prototype of the real application. I named this section Skeleton of an Application. In the third section, I mentioned the topic of persistence. Nest.js approach to this layer is really major one will create a real persistent layer of the application. In the fourth section, we'll focus on testing. I will talk a little more about unit and end-to-end -end tests. I'm going to differentiate those two types and show you how to correctly do both of them. All of the section will focus on basics of Nest.js, but it's not the end of the journey. I'm going to constantly develop the course and mention all the interested topics connected with Nest.js. There are many of them everywhere around. If you are interested in something, please write to me and I will take a look at your proposition. Thank you and I hope that this course will help you to achieve your goals connected with Nest.js. Hi, in this section we'll do a Hello World application and explain the main concept behind the Nest.js framework. I would love to strongly focus on dependency injection and dependency injection container because it's the foundation of the framework. Enjoy your Nest.js adventure in the next lessons in just a minute. Hi, welcome to this section of the course. Before we start to discover Nest.js power, we need to do some preparations. We need to have, of course, a PC with an operating system. I will work on Mac, but it's really easy to work on others' operating systems also. I will so show you an agenda. We will set up Brew, Git, and VM, Node.js, we will talk a little about Code Editor, and we will set up Nest CLI. I'm going to use Brew as a package manager. I'm familiar with it. You can use package manager of your choice. There will be different package managers for different operating systems. To install Brew, you just need to uh, enter brew.sh and copy that script to your terminal. And of course, press return. And in just a few minutes, a few seconds, you will have Brew installed. Yeah, Brew is already installed. And the second thing is Git. Git is a version control system. It's easy to install it with Brew. You just need to type brew install git and in just a few seconds git will be installed. If you mm, have other operating systems, you need to visit the official page and uh, check getting started installing git section. There is a detailed instruction for Linux, MacOS and Windows. Yeah, git is already installed. And we could install Node.js directly, but it's quite comfortable to use Node version manager to achieve such task. We will use NVM in this course. There is also alternative called N available. There is not a huge difference between them. There are some slightly differences in node paths. Both tools can be used in a similar way. To install NVM, you need to visit the official NVM uh, GitHub page and uh, check install section, copy this path, this script to your terminal, press enter, and in just a few seconds, you will have the NVM installed. You need to reload the terminal. We will use just a new one. And finally, we will need uh, Node.js. I recommend to use long time support version. When I recorded this course, the newest long-time support version was 10. There is a schedule available on Node.js Foundation page with the past and future releases. Uh, you can check it and use the newest one. As you can see, currently it's Node 10, but it will be Node 12 in the future. You can simply install Node.js using nvm install 10. This command will install Node.js and NPM. 
So we will check in a moment if everything works correctly. Let's check now version is 10.15.3 and NPM version it's 6.4.1. A uh, few words about code editors. It's of course possible to create an application in Vim, but I recommend to use dedicated editor with TypeScript support. It gives a lot of benefits. I'm using Visual Studio Code. It's free with a lot of features and plugins needed in everyday professional work. Remember that editor is only the tool. If you have preferred one, don't change it. Just ensure that your editor can handle TypeScript code. Look for some nice plugins if needed and enjoy. I will use some additional plugins also. Probably similar plugins are available on other sources, uh, on other code editors. So uh, last but not least, we will need Nest CLI. We can simply install it using npm, npm e-g uh, nest.js slash CLI. It will install, of course, uh, CLI of nest.js framework. It will take a few seconds, and in just a few seconds, we will have nest CLI installed. Yeah. And yeah, here we are. Nest information. Yeah. Nest CLI is installed. Okay, so we installed our required prerequisites during this course, and in the next next section, we'll create Hello World application. See you in just a minute. Hi and welcome. In this section, we're gonna create a Hello World application in Nest.js. It's really easy. Let's check the agenda. Uh, we're gonna create a new Nest.js project, open the project in Visual Studio Code and run our application. So, as I said, creating a new Nest.js project is really easy. We will use the CLI to generate a new project. To do so, we need to just type nest new. It's nest new and just uh, choose the name. In our case, it will be hello world. And as you can see, Nest uh, asked us about uh, description. So uh, it might be hello world application. We need to also set the version. It might be 0 0.1.0 because it's our first version. And the author is me, so David Dominiak. And yeah, uh, we need to also choose our package manager. Uh, in this course, we're gonna use NPM. Uh, you can also choose Yarn. I prefer NPM over Yarn. I was using Yarn for a long time, but I switched again. There are some reasons. Yarn log formats are different for different Yarn versions, so we need to sync Yarn versions in the whole team when working together. The same problem is with NPM, but it's much easier to achieve it with NPM because of Node Version Manager. Additionally, I've heard a story that Yarn is keeping private packages from GitHub on its own server. Uh, I didn't confirm that. I just switched to NPM with version 6. I think it's not worse option now. Okay, everything is set up. Uh, there is some problem with uh, Git repository because uh, some files are not excluded and uh, our editor wants to create uh, it, some missing Git ignore for us, but let's ignore it for, for, for this moment. As you can see, our application was generated so we can open it uh, we can open this uh, folder just by clicking application yeah and we can open the terminal also to run our nest.js project we need to just type npm run start Dev in our terminal and press return. Uh, as you can see, the next application is starting. 
and we can see what happened in our browser. We need to just type localhost and 3000 is our port. And as you can see, uh, our application is uh, properly created. Uh, application Hello World appeared. Uh, and that's it. As you can see, application bootstrap is really easy. You just need a few steps to achieve it. That might be a little confusing for you how everything is working under the hood, but I will explain it in just a minute. Hi and welcome. In this section, we'll look into the structure of generated application and we'll see what's happening under the hood. I decided to divide this section into two parts. In this part, I will explain the common concepts of Nest.js like module, like controller, like service. And in the second part, we'll check how to test Nest.js application. We'll see the scripts available in package.json and talk a little about them. In the end, we'll check TypeScript linter rules and I will show you how to extend it. Let's check the detailed agenda of the first part. As you can see, we'll do the first commit. We'll check the main TS file and nest factory class. We'll check app module TS file and app module class, app controller TS file and app controller class, and app service TS file and app service class. Before we start, we'll do our first commit. I will publish the whole repository on my GitHub so you can synchronize with me in any moment. But before we will mm, do the commit, we need to create an additional file called git ignore. Uh, it's needed because we want to ignore the whole node modules directory. And as you can see, git doesn't see the uh, node modules directory anymore. So let's add all our files and do the first commit. Let's name it uh, first nest.js course commit. And yeah, here we are. Let's come back to our main topic. Let's go to source directory and check main ts file. Uh, main ts is an entry point of nest.js application. As you can see, there's something uh, like nest factory here with method create and this factory create method returns an interface. Interface inest application uh, connected with inest express application. It's not required to use express. Express is just a default choice. As you can see, uh, this this object is returned to constant app, and there is a method listen. App listen ensures that app is listening on given port. In our case, it's three thousand. As you can see. There's an import of app module here on the top. So let's see our app module. What's the monster behind it? The concept of modules isn't new for developers with Angular background. Um, module is a class annotated with module decorator. It's really important concept of nest. Nest modules are not connected with TypeScript modules in any way. As you can see, this are, uh, these are TypeScript modules and not module, nest module is something totally uh, different. We should treat a module more like a bundle. So uh, for example, our application can consist of user module, product module and payment module. And what's really important, our module can be nested. So in our example, product module can consist of product search module or product order module, etc., etc. We'll come back to this concept later. For now, it's important to remember that 
nest modules differ from TypeScript modules, and we should treat them more like bundles. So bundles can be nested. So uh, there are two other classes declared in our module decorator. There is an app controller and app service. Let's have a look at them starting from app controller. Controller is a class controlling the entry flow. There are two important things to notice inside this class. Uh, constructor, constructor and this get hello method. Um, nest dependency injector injects the arguments injects the arguments into controller constructor automatically. I will explain details about dependency injection in one of the next courses. If you are not familiar with dependency injection container concept, just assume that arguments appears magically inside the constructor. This construction, private, private read only app service, might be new for some of you. It's nothing terrible. It's just an equivalent of something like this, like a declaration here, and this app service, app service. Yeah, it's the same, uh, just it's different, different, uh, different way of. Uh, of doing that. I think this shorter way is quite uh, understandable. So we will use that uh, shorter way in this course. Uh, look at this method, get hello. There's a get annotation here. This annotation tells us that this method should be executed when we send a request with method get. Get annotation can have an argument and argument is a path. If you remember, we had the uh, hello world, uh, hello world uh, sentence just right after we started our application. So let's start our application again. We need to do npm start. And in just a moment, We'll see our application listening on port 3000, but we have a uh, 404 error. What's going on? Let's go to test route. And as you can see, uh, we can see the hello world uh, sentence here. Okay, uh, so as you can see, we have something like app service injected into our constructor. Let's have a look at that app service. Services are classes with business logic of our application. Well, applications have really small and light controllers and business logic hidden behind the service layer. Service layer is reusable and many controllers can share the same set of services. Other parts of your application like CLI script can also share the same set of services and de facto the same business logic. The pattern allows you to avoid potential code applications in the future. Services should be decorated with annotation injectable, which means that this service should be a part of dependency injection container and should be injected into other parts of, serv of the application. Such services can be injected to other services or controllers. So I think that uh, I will thank you for this lesson. I hope that the concept of controller service and module have been explained. I will explain the meaning of the rest of files in the next section. See you in just a minute. Hi, and welcome to this section of the course. We'll continue looking under the hood of NestJS. Let's check our ag agenda. We'll check how the unit tests are written. Same with end-to-end -end tests. 
uh, then we will check the package JSON and the uh, written helper files. And in the end, last but not least, we'll check TSLint and how it's set up, uh, how can we e extend it, and so on and so on. Uh, let's start with unit tests. The example unit tests uh, are written already. Uh, files.spec.ts are uh, unit tests of our application. It means that unit tests are, are stored in such files. Uh, unit tests should be simple, fast, and independent. If you can't write simple and independent tests of your method, probably you just did a wrong method. In our application uh, example looks quite simple. Believe me, it's fast and uh, it's for sure independent. Let's check it. Uh, you don't have to believe me, we will check it. Uh, all slow actions on the methods of the tests should be mocked. We will do mocks in the future for sure. For now, let's check how to. Uh, run such test and to do it we need to just use npm and the command test and as you can see we'll have the one test passed yeah everything looks great so we can switch to end-to-end -end tests and the example end-to-end -end test is here lagbox tests of all endpoints are called end-to-end -end tests i personally prefer the name integration test because i personally think that the word integration in this case would fit better. Um, the name is different and I don't want to create an additional mess, so let's call them end-to-end. End-to-end uh, -end test checks endpoint of our application. Uh, it might be, for example, REST endpoint. Test checks if a request can be executed and if endpoints produces proper response, consists of proper status code and properly formatted response message. In our example, we are requesting the previously created uh, NestJS application and we expect uh, 200 status count and we are ex and we expect uh, hello world response message and uh, let's uh, let's try to achieve it let's try to run our uh, integration uh, integration end to end tests uh, to do it we need to just use npm run test end to end and yeah, in just a second, we'll have yeah one test passed. Uh, I think it's uh, it's pretty simple to to run it, and we can switch to package JSON. Uh, there are some uh, helper scripts in our package JSON from the top to the beginning. There is a build script. It just builds our application using the TypeScript compiler. Uh, format formats uh, our code using the instructions defined in Twitter FC uh, file. It's here. It's quite a nice feature. Uh, start is the default start. It uses uh, TS node to just run our application. Uh, start dev, on the other hand, uh, is watching for our changes. No, that no diamond is watching for our changes and restarts our application if there is a need. Uh, start debug looks similar to start dev, uh, but it additionally opens a port to debug application. I personally had some troubles to use the script with Visual Studio Code Debugger. I have checked script to use with building debugger, and I can demonstrate it. I already uh, changed the configuration, as you can see. Uh, the configuration consists of the name, which is debug. Uh, there is an argument, which is the main file of our application. We just uh, need additional uh, runtime arguments like uh, no lazy, which means that no lazy loading will be uh, included to our uh, our debug uh, our debug script. And we need to require additional TS now register file to ensure that the TypeScript files will be pre-compiled before uh, debug. We are doing everything in root directory and we are using the newest node protocol and everything looks great. Let's try to uh, use it. Yeah, everything looks great. Everything started. 
let's try to use localhost 3000 and in use you can see uh, the back point was handled and we can see the whole context here we can check uh, check what, uh, what what is this and this uh, has uh, a property app service like uh, like expected we can have an access to the console let's check this app service hello get hello and we are expecting the yeah hello world string everything looks great we can uh, go uh, step into our uh, application in our uh, call uh, stack and the next step is just an app service everything looks looks great everything is working i don't know why i have some troubles with the default script and uh, let's come back to our package json file mm, yeah we are here and there are two strange uh, scripts pre-start prod and start prod uh, both are running a compiled version of nest.js application uh, the first one is uh, compiling and the second is running the question is why the version must be compiled it means uh, why we need to uh, compile the javascript code uh, it don't have to be but remember that complete Compilation uh, takes time and resources. To make applications scalable, we should run additional instances on our infrastructure without the huge load. The lower the load is, the better. Uh, Pre-compilation before a release reduces the load and application needs less resources on startup. It's not an accident, it's thoughtful concept. Additionally, there are scripts to uh, lint test, test with watch, uh, test coverage, test debug, and uh, we can also uh, use test and went. We did it already. So I think it's all. So we can switch to tslint JSON. Last but not least, tslint JSON file. All lint related stuff can be discussed, uh, discussed, can be set up here by default lint extends uh, ts lint recommended mm, roles it's a base set of roles i strongly recommend usage of more strict set of roles in your professional project i can recommend ts lint microsoft country package it's available uh on the official microsoft github page uh, let's go to the installation section it's here we can just copy the script paste it to your to our terminal and in just a few seconds we'll have tslint microsoft country we'll need to update also the tslint json file by uh changing uh, by adding the roles directory of course but not it's not the uh it's not the it's not the one thing we need to change we need to also change the extent method and we'll save it and i'm sure we are not so strict yeah uh, microsoft country is really 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 strict uh, so i wouldn't be surprised if you will decide to loosen the uh regulation also i strongly recommend to use tesla in microsoft country in your production environment to create consistent code i'm not gonna use it during this course it would harm our lessons causing additional overhead to maintain it uh it's really really strict so i think uh i can thank you for this section and see you in just a minute hi and welcome to this section of the course I'm gonna show you one of the main concepts of Nest.js. I will explain how the dependency injection container works. So let's check the agenda for today. We'll see the dependency injection pattern. We'll talk a little, a little about it. And we'll see the implementation of it in dependency injection container of Nest.js application. So let's check what's going on with dependency injection pattern. Dependency injection is a 
technique whereby one object can supply the dependencies to the another object. The practical implementation is quite simple and we really don't need NestJS application at all. We'll need the real life example, so let's create a file called assembler.ts to demonstrate such pattern. Let's create a new file assembler.ts. Yeah, here we are. And let's import our service and controller and initialize them. Let's create our service then, but let's import up service from up service and import um, up controller from up controller. Yeah, here we are. And we need to just initialize them. We need to create const app service that will be an instance of app service class. We don't have to pass any arguments in this case, but we'll need to do it in just a moment because we'll create app controller which is an instance of new app controller and as you can see we need to inject an argument here and it must be app service yeah here we are here we are so let's call also the get hello method mm, up, uh, let's create const hello and let's call up controller get hello method um we can also log our output to standard output so let's run console log hello and as you can see there is some problem but we can easily fix it uh because uh, testlint forbid us to use console log but it's important because of some testing purposes to show you how it's working we need to just run our assembler file to use it we are uh, we can uh, call npx use ts node ts node is a kind of overlay over the node.js and we can use typescript uh, directly and we'll run our assembler.ts file and as you can see the response is hello world it means response uh, standard output is hello world so everything looks great and it's working what we just did is manual dependency injection assembly.ts file is not connected with nest.js application in any way it's just an example how to achieve dependency injection outside of nest.js a recognition of dependency needs and injection inside NestJS application is a task of dependency injection container, which assembly all dependencies for us automatically. Thanks to that, we don't really need files like assembler.ts assembler in NestJS application. Nest is strongly using the, the dependency injection container. Dependency inj injection container makes dependency injection technique more automatic. All work that we done in assembler.ts file is done by dependency injection container. We just need to annotate injectable class like app service with the annotation injectable to ensure that container will take care of it. Nest.js container also reduces the visibility of current service to current module. That's why we need to also register our services in our module by adding them to module annotation. As you can see, app service is added here and app controller is added here. We can also easily change the service visibility and we'll do it for sure in the next few lessons. 
So to sum up, dependency injection pattern is one of the ways to implement dependency inversion principle. If you are not familiar with it, it's one of the five principles collected into mnemonic acronym called SOLID created by, by Uncle Bob. Necessarily Google SOLID and Uncle Bob if you haven't heard such names before. Thanks to dependency injection technique, we don't have to carry so much about dependencies. We don't need to worry that given dependency will be initialized many times and will cause potential memory leak. On the other hand, we are sure that all dependencies are initialized. What's super important, we can easily mock the dependencies and supply mock dependencies inside our objects. It makes the unit test faster and more independent. We'll do such things during the course and I will show the practical example then. Dependency injection container automates our work and we don't need to solve and inject dependencies manually. I hope that this technique is more clear for you now and you will also see the benefits of using it. It's all for this lesson. Thank you and see you in just a minute. Hi, thank you for watching this section. I hope you enjoyed Nest.js. There were a lot of concepts and explanations here. The next sections are going to be more practical ones. In reference to the previous lecture, as a postscriptum, I wanted to mention that the difference between classic approach of services instantiation and dependency injection container. Please take a look at this image. There is a main class function called by main thread uh, of the application. Inside this function or other called indirectly, we need to instantiate all the services. It's difficult to manage the uh, life scope of such services in such case. Let's have a look at dependency injection container approach. All that happens inside the dependency injection container, which is well tested and re re reliable. We are just starting the container bar by running our application inside the main function. I hope that those two pictures will clarify you this topic. We'll rely on this pattern strongly in the next sections. Hi, you know already the main concepts behind the Nest.js. In this section, we'll focus on the business logic of the application. We'll create our first module and a service inside. This module will also consist of a controller and both unit and end-to-end -end tests. We're going to make this app a modular one. Modular architecture is not a new concept. Application nicely separated to modules consists of smaller chunks responsible for its own. Such chunks can be developed by a smaller team separately, be separated to microservices in the future, or just create a network or of self-documented small chunks to be easily understandable by new developers and easier to maintain. Please enjoy this section with me and Nest.js. See ya in just a minute. Hi and welcome to this lesson. Before we start, I want to recap that you can synchronize code with me in any moment. Just enter my GitHub page and find the repository nice locations. You can easily clone this repository and check out to tag skeleton. It's super easy. Just type git checkout skeleton and you will be synchronized. You need to do it, of course, in your terminal, in your working directory. So let's check out again to master and let's check uh, what we'll, we'll do in this lesson. And in this lesson, we'll just change the metadata of our application. It will be no more hello world application. It's gonna be nice location storage. So let's check the agenda for this lesson and it's lo it looks quite simple because we'll just change the package JSON, we'll update package log, we'll uh, change uh, directory name and commit the changes. Let's have a look at the package JSON. Uh, we're gonna create an application being the database of nice location. So let's check 
let's change the name of our application to nice locations. We need to change uh, this name, nice locations, and the descriptions description to nice locations also. Uh, it's not the only needed change because uh, package JSON is also not updated. As you can see, uh, there is a name hello world, but uh, we can just update it by uh, npm install. And in just a few seconds, this name should be changed. Oh uh, yeah, as you can see, there is a name, nice locations. Uh, we need to also change the directory name. Uh, it's super easy. Just info hello world to uh, move hello world to nice locations, and we did all needed changes. So we can simply check the status and commit our changes and we can name it like change application hello world meta data uh, our new application is nice location storage yeah everything looks great let's push it to our uh, repository and yeah we changed the metadata of our application so let's continue create our app in the next lesson hi and welcome to this lesson in this lesson we will focus on setting up the template engine and generate simple page let's check the agenda We'll install Handlebars template engine for Express. We'll do the changes in main TS file. We'll create two directories. We'll create the first Handlebar template. We'll check the uh, controller unit test and we'll set up controller to use Handlebar template. At the end, we'll run the test and test our application manually. So let's start. Uh, we'll install Handlebars, but you can choose whatever fits you best. Handlebars are great B for me because they're super extensible. To install Handlebars template engine, we just need to use npm um, install save hbs. And in just a few seconds, Handlebars will be installed. HBS is a plugin for uh, an expert of Handlebars template. Uh, so don't worry, it's a proper uh, name. We need to set up handlebars in the main TS files also, file also. To do it, we need to use the method app set view engine. And it's super easy. App set view engine and handlebars. Oops. Okay. And set the base directory uh, of the views, we, 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 co containing the views by method app set base view directories yeah so let's think where we are in the directory structure our main directory is one level higher than the current one so let's create a constant up directory Sorry. to indicate the application main directory. We need to use method resolve from path and we need to use uh, current directory name and we need to go one level higher. Mm, so our mm, base view directory will have a name views so uh, let's set up our um, base views directory in a similar way we need to resolve um, app directory and 
views. Let's format it a little better. Up, uh, yeah. And what's worth to um, to do also? Uh, it's worth to uh, set up also publicly accessible resources using the method use static assets. Um, up use static assets and in a similar way we will resolve our uh, our path to publicly accessible resources um okay main ts file looks great so let's create uh proper directories we need to just create a new directory and call uh, and create set the name views and the next one set the name public okay let's add also the uh, git keep file to public directory to keep the uh, directory in github because uh, we will know uh, at this stage we will not public uh, any resources but we want to keep this file in uh, in our git uh, okay looks great so um, let's create our first hbs template let's call it list hbs because we want to list our nice locations there list.hbs and let's start creating our first uh, file uh, we need to create a doc type we need to use html here some header means head section uh, we will need for sure meta for uh, car set it's uh, utf8 for sure and we need the title and our in our case it will be nice locations okay let's move to body section we'll also have a header nice locations and yeah we want to list our locations so we'll use the um, handlebars uh, template to list our locations to do it we need to use the pl uh, the uh, plugin of uh, handlebar each locations yeah and it's it's a kind of a loop and we need to access this location with this okay it looks great uh, so uh, we need to change the controller also but before we'll change the controller take notice that we'll need to change also controller unit test so start let's start with that unit test um the controller method will no longer returns hello world instead we'll have a method list locations um let's create uh, it here list locations will return an array with proper locations we also need to change expect method to uh, this method to be to method to match object because our object will no longer be uh, the same it means in this case it was a string so uh, we didn't care about uh, instance of that string because every string in uh, in JavaScript script string is just a literal uh, but we will need to compare an object in our case it will be object with property locations and there will be an array with locations there will be location 1 location 2 and let's create also location three okay this uh, test looks great so let's uh, set up the controller it's 
last but not least. Let's go to our app controller and change the controller to use handlebars template. To do it, we need to just add um, render annotation and we need to uh, add the uh, template that is going to be rendered. Uh, in our case is list handlebars. Uh, okay, but we'll no longer use the method get hello. We need to change it to list locations and we need to return something different than string, but controller should uh, have a proper test already. We can, I think, uh, test it and this test should not pass. Yeah, one test failed, so let's fix this test. Mm, this controller will no longer return a string, so let's create an interface, uh, a DTO, which will be returned. Uh, let's create an interface I location list DTO and it's going to be an object with uh, property locations and property locations should be an array of the strings. Uh, everything looks great. We just need to change the returned uh, value from string to i location list dto of course now it 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 don't have to it, it must be um, an object an object with property locations and let's copy our locations from here to here and format it properly and everything looks great. Let's run our unit test to check if something changed, if everything works correctly. Yeah, one test passed, everything's work correctly. To be sure that everything is working, let's run our application. Just type npm start uh, dev, npm run start dev. And in just a few seconds, yeah, application is working. Let's go to localhost 3000. Yeah, as you can see, we've got the view with nice locations. We can uh, now add the new location here, location four. And uh, in just a moment, our location four should be visible here. As you can see, our application is running properly. Thank you for your time and see you in the next lesson. Hi and welcome to this lesson. We set up our controller and did the change in the unit test. To have a whole picture, we need also to run end-to-end -end tests. So let's run them by npm run test end-to-end. -end. npm run test end-to-end. -end. Test are running and as you can see, test failed. So let's check what happened. We expected hello world, but we got the whole HTML page in exchange. That's how templating is working. Do we need to compare the whole HTML content directly? Yes and no. But before we start, let's have a look at the agenda. We'll install just HBS extension. We'll create test setup file. We'll set up just we'll update the just setup just and we'll fix end-to-end -end test finally so i haven't found any out of the box solution so we need to do a clever one i've prepared for you a just extension to test templates we need to install it using npm so let's install it by npm install save dev just hbs extension it will take a moment but don't worry we can just create a setup without that extension we need to 
uh, create a file test setup.ts in our test directory. As you can see, just extension is correctly installed. We uh, need to import our just extension and uh, the um, default export of that extension is a function and this function we can call uh, at just HBS um, extension from just HBS extension looks great uh, to call this we, we need to call this function of course but as you can see this function will need the views path it's a views path of our views so let's create a constant containing the views path and of course we need to resolve uh, our path and we need to get the directory name we need to go one level up because we are inside the test directory and we want to use views yeah and now everything looks great we can add this views path here our test setup.ts file looks working you can notice that we are duplicating code we are already defined uh we already defined views path uh we'll take care of it, it in a, one of the next few lessons when we'll talk about configs for now just remember that we'll need to fix it so let's set up jest now we need to set up jest to use our extension so let's open our jest end to end dot json it's this file and what we need to do is to add setup test framework script file and we need to indicate um, our test setup .ts file yeah um, looks great and now we need to fix our end-to-end -end test so let's have a look at our end-to-end -end test we are still expecting hello world we need to change it we can use promises to do it mm, we can use then here and uh, get text and we want to expect that this text and this is the new functionality uh, that our extension uh, ex our extension extended the just expect method with a method too much compiled handlebars template and we need to indicate our handlebars template in our case it's list.hbs and we need to also uh, check our uh, pass our object we need to pass object with locations and there is a location one there is a location two and there is also the location three yeah everything looks great let's try to run our end-to-end -end test by command npm run test end-to-end -end. and in just a moment we'll see what 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 will happen yeah as you can see end-to-end -end test passed everything looks working our extension works great you can find detailed implementation on my github page let's have a look there changes in our application can handle the behavior can change the behavior of our test 
take care about it and do not forget to run all the tests. In one of the next sections, I'm going to explain how to set up continuous integration platform to run unit and end-to-end -end tests for us. Uh, thank you for this lesson and see ya in the next lesson in just a minute. Hi and welcome to this lesson. During this lesson, we'll create our first module. So let's check the agenda. We'll generate the next module. We'll move controller and unit test to the new module. We'll run unit and end-to-end -end test in the end. So uh, to generate NestJS module, we'll use Nest CLI. It's quite easy. We just need to type Nest generate module and we need to pick the name. In our case, it's going to be location. And in just a moment, we'll have a new module created. So let's check what was changed. There is a new directory named location and file location.module.ts. There is a class location module inside this file. And if you look at app module, you will also notice that there is an additional information. Our newly created module is also registered in app module. From Nest perspective, app module is a parent class for location module. Uh, let's move our controller and unit test to the child class, uh, to the mm, location module. To do it, we'll just need to move the files Yeah, everything looks great. The paths were updated. Uh, I think except this one. Oh, no, paths wasn't updated. Let's update them manually, don't worry. Uh, we need to update this path and we need to update this and this. I don't know what happened. Uh, normally this path should be updated automatically mm, in this editor at least. We would like to change the name of these files also to fit better to our needs. So let's change the mm, file and classes names to location. Let's change the name to location.controller.ts and the controller spec JS file TS file to location uh, controller spec TS file. We'll also need to change the app controller class. Let's change it to location controller and we'll also need to do some changes in test file. We need to change this uh, variables to indicate location and use capitalized letter here. It looks great. I think that all app, uh, app controller uh, instances are removed from our files. We need to also move the controller definition to the location module. To do it, we'll need to create the property controllers in our module annotation and import uh, indicate the location controller. But remember that we have also uh, the controller, location controller, I don't know why it's app controller, here. It should out be automatically updated. Sometimes it's not working correctly. Uh, I think that the newer version of editor will uh, will fix some problems. Mm, there is also the location controller. We need to save it because there were some changes. Yeah, everything looks great. Mm, we need to do something with that app service also. I think that we will not need app service anymore. 
if we would like to create location service we'll just create a new one it's a really simple service and you will check how how to create such services mm, let's remove the app service we need to remove that file and editor should indicate where such app service was yeah it was for sure in the test it's no more needed the occurrence was in a controller it's also no more needed yeah looks great in the end we'll run our unit and end-to-end -end tests uh, to check if everything works correctly so let's start with unit test npm test yeah unit tests are working and let's check end-to-end -end test to do it we need to just npm run test end-to-end -end. and in just a few seconds yeah you uh, end to end test passed let's start our application and check if something changed nothing should change localhost 3000 yeah everything looks exactly the same so everything works great looks like application works exactly in the same way we just have a nicely separated module with business logic connected with locations Thank you for your patience and see ya in the next lesson. Hi and welcome to this lesson. In the last lesson we've created a module. Modules are really powerful tools in developers' hands. Thanks to them we can reduce the scope of a big application to nicely separated modules. Each module can be maintained by a different person or a different team so there should be loosely coupled connection between modules the loser the better on the other hand every module has its own structure consisting of controllers services and persistence layer in this lesson we'll focus on service so let's have a look at the agenda we'll not create a service interface we'll generate a service create the service unit test and we'll implement the service in in the end we'll inject a service to, to the controller some can argue that there is no reason to create an interface for every single service and yeah there was uh, the well-written application never had one class using a single interface because the second implementation was a mock. Do you remember what I said about unit tests? Unit tests should be fast and independent. Interfaces made unit tests easier because services stayed loosely coupled. Thanks that we can easily create a light mock to be injected inside the service. But time is passing, things are going forward and this is a problem of Java world of the early 21st century. Mm, then Mokito came to Java. In TypeScript world, we don't have Mokito. We don't need to. We can easily create a strange construction like mm, like const whatever isn't just an object as app module it can be easily injected as a mock to a tested service okay stop with theory let's create a real service to generate a service we just need to run a command nest generate service and we need to pick a name in our case it's going to be location yeah as you can see the service and unit test of this service has been generated so 
let's go to check what happened. There are new files with test and service and some basic implementation code inside. Service is also registered in our location module. As you can see, the service is here. So let's check our unit test. As you can see, the first test is written. I personally don't like the default messages approach to write a unit test and generate a testing module before every test. Uh, it's adding unnecessary complexity and tests execute longer. Let's simplify it a little. Let's, uh, let's remove that uh, module at all. And let's stick with the fact that our service is just an object location service. Um, it should be enough. And this test is also uh, not needed, not needed in this shape. Okay, uh, before we'll change the test, let's create a method placeholder in our location service. Our method is going to list our location. So let's name it list. It's public method, of course, without an, any arguments, and it will return the array of um, an array of uh, of our locations, array with locations, and it's a placeholder of our service. So let's try to uh, test it. It should return locations. So we, we are expecting that service list to be to be an array. Um, to match object, I think it's better to match object and there will be location one, location two and location three. Yeah, okay, everything looks great. Let's check our unit tests. Let's uh, do the command npm test. And as you can see, there are two tests. And one test passed, passed and one test failed. It's expected behavior, of course, because we didn't implement our service business logic. So let's implement our service. We need to return an array with locations instead of just an empty array. For now, we will just return an array with location based on that service locations, it means based on just a strings, location one, location two, location three. Yeah, and let's run our test again. And in just a few seconds, we'll have the result. Yeah, two tests passed, everything looks working. Let's use our service inside our controller. Injection is pretty easy because nest dependency injection container will do the injection for us. So we just need to use our service inside the container. Uh, we will need a constructor and we need to use our service. It's of course private read only uh, property with location service being a location service. It's automatically imported. Yeah, 
everything looks looks exactly like like it should and we will not return uh, an array with locations here we'll use this location service list we can do it even um, even better we will create a constant locations and we will bind it to the re result of that method list and then we will just return object with locations inside okay looks working let's run our and uh, our end to end tests test end to end uh, end to end test should pass because nothing has changed yeah looks working uh, finally we'll run our application by command npm start <coughs> application is running let's go to localhost 3000 yeah there are three locations exactly uh, exactly what we expected okay so it looks like we are not moving forward with our app but don't worry we created a really nice skeleton and shortly we'll do big things it's really important to show you the right skeleton of an application we'll short, short, shortly rapidly develop new features services are places to keep our business logic thanks that our logic can be easily reusable it's really important to remember to keep controllers as light as possible and move business logic to the services, which can be easily unit tested and used not only via HTTP endpoints. Thank you for this lesson and see ya in just a minute. Hi, thank you for this section. We've created the very first module of an application. Such modules, uh, module consists of all business logic connected with locations. NestJS module can be nested and will nest the modules for sure in the future. Such nicely separated location module will be a proud first chunk of the application. Let's come back to work in the next section in just a minute. Hi, persistence is one of the three important layers of the backend application. Persistent layer allow us to store objects and access them in the future. Well implemented persistence is using abstractions such as repository to make an object accessible without the knowledge of the real implementation. Thanks that the process is more independent, what means it it what means it is also easier to test and possibly refactor in the future. Let's begin our journey through the ocean of persistence with me and NestJS. Hi and welcome to this lesson. I promise to come back with an explanation of the way to correctly handle the config of our application. Before we start, I just want to mention that I had to fix the location controller unit test. I didn't want to create an additional video to do that. If you are curious about the change, just visit the GitHub. Let's check our agenda. We are going to install config package then generate config module and service. We'll create our first config and use our config inside the application. I know that there is a tip on nest.js to use .env library. Let me show you something different, probably less popular, but more powerful. We're going to install the config library. To do it, we need to type npm install save config in our terminal, of course. Um, yeah, 
in a moment we'll have config installed. Let's wait a minute or just a few seconds. Yeah, looks like config is already installed. So we would also need typings. Typings are available to install via npm install save for development. And we need to install types for our config library. In just a moment, we'll have types installed. Yeah, mm, types are yeah types are already installed. So uh, to nicely separate config from the rest of our app, we need to create a new module. Let's type nest create module and we need to pick a name in our case it's going to be config and nest will create it's not create it's generate of course generate module config yeah as you can see, config module is created. We'll also need a config service. So let's type nest generate service config. Yeah, and config service with unit test has been generated. Let's implement the config service. It's quite easy to implement it. We just need one method. It's method get. It's method which will uh, have an argument key with a string and which will return the generic type. So we could ask about any type we want and we would return config uh, config. Mm, I think we need to import it manually. Import everything as config from config and now we can return config get also we need a generic type and we need to pass our key as an argument yeah the service is uh, not complicated seems even a little not needed however remember how Simply is mocking injected dependencies. We'll save a lot of time in the future. I didn't do any test. I will do for sure in a moment. Please open config service spec ts file and let's implement the test. Uh, we will not need this section. Instead, we will initialize service directly using just close, close new config service. It's really uh, easiest way to achieve it. And um, our test will uh, indicate views location because that's our task that we can extract to config. Let's create a template path we need to resolve it by passing a dear name as an argument. As you can see we are 
two level, uh, our main directory is two level higher than current directory. So we need to go up and one more time up and we will need uh, indicate the views directory. In our case, it's views. And we would expect that our service get, and we are expecting string, and our service will would give templates path and template templates path from our config will equal our constant yeah looks good let's run it npm test and in just a moment we will see um yeah right test is failing that's because we didn't indicate the path we need to create a config or uh, we need to create a config file especially there is a plenty of available config formats to choose like json json5 yaml but i would suggest to use typescript typescript based config will be consistent with the rest of an application and quite powerful we can also simple programming uh, do simple programming uh, inside so let's create the first config uh, let's create the default.ts file in a directory named config default.ts TS and let's implement our first config. We need to export an object with templates of our uh, of, with template settings of our application. Templates would have an uh, a property path, and we would resolve uh, resolve our uh, path using a directory name it's as you can see one level uh, we need to go one level higher and goes to the views directory yeah and it's our templates path we would also implement our public path and in this case it's resolve directory name one level up and the directory named public yeah looks great uh, this should be single quoted so if you remember what i said about nest dependency injection container then you know that we cannot inject config service into our modules we should let the config module to export a config service to ensure that config service will be properly injected in other pieces of our application. So let's go to our config module and add property and add property exports and we are going to export our config service. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we forgot to run npm test to ensure that our config is working correctly. Yeah, everything is working. There is also a, a warning that we are running application with node env uh, test and we don't have the config for test, but this is just a warning so don't worry about it at this moment. The most important fact is that our test passed. There are two places where we need to inject the views path. As you remember, it's bootstrap. It's here. 
and we can easily access the config service from this main ts file to do it we need to just use uh, our injector to have an access to our config you would use the method get of our app and you would like to get the config service it's easy as as it uh, we will no more need that uh, constant instead we will get the views directory from our config we will also need the string and we would like to get templates path yeah and our views directory will be passed here yeah looks great we'll do the same with public directory const public directory and let's copy it and it's not templates instead it's a just public path and let's copy it here we we'll also not need resolve from the module path here and everything looks great end-to-end -end setup is more challenging we could run test nest application uh, with config service injected but it's not needed let's go do that end-to-end -end, uh, setup do you do you remember what i said about services services can share business logic within http application but services could also be easily used uh, also outside the http or even outside the framework scope services are just classes containing the business logic so let's simply initialize the service inside the setup file we'll just need to initialize a config service so const config service will be just new config service and we will get the views path from our config service we'll need a string also and we'll get templates path this constant is no not no needed and resolve is also not needed and everything should work so uh let's uh, test our end to end test npm run test end to end yeah end to end test um ah uh, there is a just a small problem uh, with uh, paths but uh, we can easily solve it and in just a moment we'll have end-to-end -end tests paths yeah everything is working just a warning here uh our unit tests were were, were, work, were work, working also so let's start our application yeah let's go to localhost 3000 yeah everything looks working so config library is really powerful i encourage you to visit the official github page of node config uh, it's the official github page of the uh, config library mm, you will see all the possibilities here different config files can be loaded depends on environment variables multiple config files can be merged with each other application 
arguments or environment variables can override the current config and that's really really super that we have that feature and there is a plenty of possibilities to meet the needs of our application we'll discover more in the next few lessons and the next few sections hi and welcome to this lesson in this lesson we're gonna install PostgreSQL. So let's check the agenda. We're gonna install PostgreSQL, create a database for our system user, open PostgreSQL terminal, create a database for the application and create application user. To install PostgreSQL, you just need already installed Brew. Let's install PostgreSQL using Brew install PostgreSQL. Look for installation instruction for other package managers and other operating systems. It should be quite easy. In case of any troubles, just ask a question in our course forum or go to the Docker section and install PostgreSQL using a Docker. Looks like PostgreSQL is already installed. Remember to refresh your terminal or just open the new tab. There should be a command uh, in a moment. There should be a command create database available in your terminal. Let's use it to create our first database. Uh, create database. Who am I? The command creates a database named exactly like your system user. Please run command psql to open PostgreSQL terminal. To create a, a special database for our application, we'll use SQL. Mm, let's create a database. Create database locations with owner David Dominiak, it's me. Yeah, database created. So let's create a user for our application. Create user app with encrypted password app. Yeah, it might be quite easy because it's only a local database. And our user must connect to the database and achieve it. Mm, the user mm, to achieve it, user needs some privileges. Uh, so let's grant all uh, on database locations to app user. Yeah, and that's all. It's just a prerequisite to our journey to the persistence layer. Discovering more interesting corners is just ahead of us. See ya in the next lesson. Hi and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to set up the connection between the application and Postgres database. Let's check the agenda. We're going to create database module. Then we'll install type ORM and set it up. We'll update config files and start Nest.js application. Database module seems not needed, but believe me, it is. There are plenty of issues related to the database, such as migrations or database config, and it's a good place to keep them all together. I hope it's one of the last not domain related module in this course. To generate database module, we'll simply need to type nest generate module database. And in just a moment, database module, yeah, database module is generated. We'll need to set up database connection. We're going to use type ORM, which is the default and the best ORM for Nest.js. To install type ORM, we're going to use npm. We'll also install Nest.js adapter and Postgres library. We'll need to type npm install save Nest.js type. ORM, 
type rm itself and postgres library rm can be translated to object relational mapping it's a technique for converting data between incompatible type systems relational and objective one it's a quite common pattern in the programming world like every other pattern contains advantages and disadvantages if you want to read more please find my article on medium what's up in vietnam to set up type rm we need to add dynamic dependency into the nest dependency injection container dynamic modules are special customizable modules there is a special module in nest js type rm package which depends on some options our configuration should be quite big so we would like to separate the configuration logic to separate service let's create a file postgres postgres type rm config dot service dot ts in our database module let's open it now yeah, here is opened already and implement the database configuration logic we'll need to export class postgres um postgres type or um, config service and it we are going to implement a uh, type rm it may be not uppercase type rm options factory yeah because we'll factorize the type rm options uh, we are going to uh, implement it and import it from nest.js type rm library i don't know why there are, there are no suggestions um let's check it again no no suggestions so we need to do it manually import uh type rm options factory from nest.js type rm yeah and we'll need to implement the uh, interface yeah we'll need to implement the interface to create type rm options uh, the return type looks strange because we only need to return type rm um, module options but it's a special nest uh, js type compatible with uh, that uh, rm options in this case we will return an object with an options we would use postgres so type of our database is postgres it's hard to do it uh, it's hard to do it uh, dynamic because uh, we'll need to set up type of postgres uh, to, to to postgres uh, rm options and it's uh, quite common to use just one database if we would like to migrate to other database like sqlite or mysql we would like to create new uh, new service and inject it in, into database modules it could be quite simple uh, we'll need also url but to inject the url we need to inject the configuration into our class private read only config service and it's a type of config service yeah now we can have access to this config service get and we are expecting a string string not sting string and we would like to use the path database url yeah the third options is entities 
uh, entities uh, indicates where entities are uh, where can we find entities it's a quite uh, new um, new word for you so if you don't know what the entities are don't worry I will explain it in the next lesson uh, we'll need to indicate where the entities are placed placed in our case uh, we'll get this value from config service and it's an array of strings and we'll get from path ORM entities entities yeah like that be careful uh, with that paths because there are no uh, there are no uh, uh, there are no uh, suggestions yeah we'll also need to synchronize our uh, will our database uh, depends on config state we'll get this state it's a boolean time from rm synchronize yeah everything looks uh, looks great to inject such logic into the database module we need to add the uh, imports property and import our configuration service uh, to uh, the database module. Uh, let's create the imports properties. And there is a special module called type or um, named type or um, module, and it's a dynamic module, so we will need to use uh, for a root. Uh, section but we would like to also uh, yeah we'll need for root section and we'll need to import for root async section because it's a synchronous loaded module and we'll need to import our config module and we would like to use the class postgres type rm config service yeah exactly like this let's uh, fix the uh, inter uh, let's fix the uh, lint and everything should work except the fact that we don't have the proper configuration uh, setup Let's open the uh, config default.ts file. Let's sort the current config uh, in alphabetical order to reduce the mess. And let's create our config. We would like to create a database path. In our case, it's going to be URL. And our URL is Postgres app. It's login with password app at localhost, uh, localhost. And our database is locations. Uh, we don't need any anything more, and we'll need to set our uh, RM uh, config also. In this case, it's a, a NT entities we we'll need to indicate the entities and uh, we need to indicate the path so let's create a helper to indicate the source path and we are going to resolve that from current directory name one level up and it's a source directory and our entities are placed inside uh, are going to be placed inside because we don't have any entities yet source path and our entities uh, will be placed under 
any directory and can be named like any in any way but will uh, the, the the final um, final section will be entity.ts let's fix the linter and we'll also need to decide if we want to synchronize our uh, data our application with the database or not and by default we don't want to we decided to not synchronize the database because of the risk of inconsistency uh, the risk is lower wake on the local environments so let's change this value for, for local running to do it we need to create a file local dot ts in the config directory and we are going to export default rm synchronize and in this case it's going to be true yeah and thanks to that local uh, environment will synchronize the uh, application state with the database and uh, we need to synchronize the database on other environments manually to ensure that everything is all right we should start the application so let's type uh, npm start in our terminal mm. something is wrong let's go to postgres type url config service um and we can see that we missed the injectable injectable decorator injectable annotation let's check again yeah, something is still wrong configuration property or synchronize is not defined or I'm synchronize let's check what we defined here synchronize let's check what we defined in local everything looks uh, looks okay here mm. and it is, is defined but in this case the RM synchronize is not let's check if something changed after the setting it up Mm. RM synchronize and it's false and if we are going to set it like that no, nothing is changed maybe something wrong with merging Nope. Or RM or RM synchronize synchronize. And we are using int like RM synchronize. RM synchronize. Config service get RM synchronize. yeah everything is running i think that that what was the problem ah yeah there was a problem with uh, a typo yeah and let's uncomment it and change the synchronize to true and let's run our nest application again it's really important to always check if your changes doesn't break your application uh, in our case everything should work let's check on localhost 3000 yeah, everything is working so we properly set up the database connection 
it's the first step to meet the persistence layer. Thank you and see you in the next adventure. Hi and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we are going to create a new entity. It's going to be a preparation for a greater refactor. So we'll break some tests for a few lessons. Don't worry, we'll fix them all. Let's have a look at the agenda and we'll define entity, create the location entity and inject location repository. Following Wikipedia, entity is anything that claims independent existence as opposed to merely, be, merely being a part of a whole. Following the Eric Evans definition, entity is an object not fundamentally defined but by its attributes, but rather by a thread of continuity and identity. Probably the most illustrative example will be the real one. So let's create a first entity in our application. It's going to be location. Let's create a file location, <coughs> location.entity.ts and we are going to implement the entity. We will export class location, not the location entity because it's easier to say just location. We'll have location name, not location entity name. It's easier and it's more common in a real world. And we'll have two properties. The one is ID and it's going to be a string and the second one is name. It's also be, will be a string. And to create a proper entity, we'll need also some annotation. We'll need, for example, for sure, entity annotation. And as you can see, it's imported from type ORM. Let's change the uh, double quote marks to single ones. <clears throat> and let's add other annotation. We'll need the annotation primary generated column. And we are going to use UID as our primary generated column. It will indicate our ID in the database. And we'll also use the column annotation. Yeah, our entity class looks like every other class. So on the other hand, there's a lot of meaningful annotations, such annotations, maps an instance of the class and object to relational tables in the database. Entity annotation marks our class as an entity. Primary generated column annotation is generating identity of our location. Column, column annotation marks property named, uh, property name as a volume that need to be translated into the column named name in the database. Type RM automatically create location repository for us. Repository is a concept of an abstraction layer or a persistence process. Uh, thanks that we don't need to worry about the way that objects are mapped and stored. We are just getting objects from the repository. Such objects are ready to be processed by the application and its business logic. To let type ORM create a repository for us, we need to import type ORM module for the location feature. Let's open location module.ts and add import property. We'll need to uh, add the property and import type ORM module. And we'll need to do it just for one feature. And this feature is location. Yeah. And in that way, we'll import the mm, location repository. To inject location repository into the 
service, we need to use dependency injection. There is a special annotation inject repository to be used inside the service. Let's create a constructor for a location service. Let's create a constructor and we'll use annotation inject repository. Yeah, it's auto imported and we'll import the repository for location entity and this repository will be of course private we are going to use a uh, location repository property to store our repository it's a type of repository but it's a generic type so we'll need to use location as a generic argument yeah our location repository is stored so we would also change the list method to list the real entities to do it we'll need to return this location repository and use the method find yeah looks great except the fact that we are returning the wrong type and we are doing it not asynchronously we'll need to use async method here and we would like to return a promise promise for location and much even more strict for a locate for an array of locations this async is I think not needed in this case but it will indicate that this is a synchronous function yeah from our point of view everything looks good repository is injected into the service but we also break the rest of our app controller is expecting uh, yeah as you can see there's an error controller is expecting an array with strings from the service the same with test yeah test is broken some additional work must be done before we test and start our app again but we are on a good path see ya in just a minute hi and welcome to this lesson in this lesson i'm gonna show you how to transform entities to dto this lecture might last long so i decided to divide this lecture into two parts let's have a look at the agenda we'll talk about dto concept we'll install automapper create a common module create a mapping service we'll implement mapping registry service and we'll create location dto finally we'll create location mapping service DTO can be translated as data transfer object. It's known pattern in the programming world. Thanks to DTO, we can fully control the output from and input to the application. DTO handles the correct data in the application borders. It doesn't have to be fully consistent with our entities, but it is mostly quite similar to the application logic. Thanks to that, we can simply map DTO to the entity and entity to DTO. Please have a look at the attached image. DTO are needed on the boundaries of the application. It's not fully true in our case because we are generating also the templates, but DTO exists at least on the boundary of the controller services and persistent layer are using entities on the other um, on the other hand we should map our elastic flexible dtos into entities which are part of strict model of our business we want to keep our api flexible for changes but the business model shouldn't change in case of required api change not all applications need DTOs. It's 
especially useful in two cases when we will programming for enterprise where we, 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 we will do the enterprise programming where API endpoints are fully specified and there is no elasticity in the view of the API or when or the second case in is where API changes a lot. I promised enterprise ready framework and I'm gonna implement DTO and all the mappings in the best known for me way. Possibly it's not needed feature in your application. If you want to read more about DTOs, let's have a look on that Uncle Bob page about data transfer object. It's linked under the video. There is a real great, really great package dedicated to mapping in the .NET world. It's called AutoMapper. We're gonna install JavaScript equivalent of such package and to do it we just need to do npm install save automapper dash ts. Automapper will help us to map all the DTOs to entities and all entities to DTOs. We're gonna create for sure a common module to store something like mapping registry. I promise it's the last not domain related module. To create our module, we're gonna type nest generate module common. And in a moment, module command will be generated. Yeah, it is. If you want to read more about the registry, please visit the Uncle Bob blog about registries. Registries are created to registry other objects. We would like to store all the mappings. Let's create an abstract mapping service by creating mapping service dot ts file in the common module. Let's implement that file. We are gonna export abstract class mapping service. Yeah, looks nice. We are going to self register mappings in the register. To achieve it, we need to inject the register into all mapping services. To do it, we need to create a constructor with a mapping registry service. And it will be of type mapping registry. Registry service. We haven't created already, so uh, we need to wait for implementation. But all the mapping services should have a method at mapping. It's abstract method at mapping. And this method will no is not gonna return any type, so it's void type. Okay, mapping mapping service looks awesome. Let's implement a mapping registry. Let's create a file mapping registry registry dot uh, service dot ts. Now we can simply implement the mapping registry. We're gonna export class mapping registry service. And we are going to make this injectable. By the way, same with mapping service, it's 
injectable. We can now also, uh, it's not double quoted. We can now uh, import mapping registry service. Looks great. And yeah, let's go to the implementation of mapping registry service. And we are going to co collect all the services into the array. Let's create this array. It's private read only mapping services. And it's going to be an array of mapping services. Um, we can define it even. Mapping service. Array of mapping services. Yeah, we'll register all map services and initialize mappings. We are going to create a method register mapping service and as an argument we'll get mapping service and we'll push this mapping service to our mapping services array mapping service uh, from the Letter. mapping service yeah looks okay and we are going to also initialize instant instantiate that uh, mapping so we are going to use method at mapping yeah looks great and finally we are going to use mapping by simply map the proper objects between incompatible interfaces to do it, we are going to use method map. It's a public method map with generic type. As a source, it's going to be a class. Class, is a, class name is a tar type, type of string. As a target, we are going also to get a class. And we, we are going to use any type of object and return the generic type and to do it to achieve it we just need to use the auto mapper mm. what's wrong with auto mapper auto mapper is a global uh, global object and we need to import it in that way and it's gonna register auto mapper in our global scope. It's not the best solution, but it's really great library. Although all the um, all the disadvantages, we are going to map this auto mapper from source to target, and we are going to use that object. And it's going to be a type of our generic type. Yeah, everything looks great. And do not forget to register the service in the common module. Let's go one more to, um, to mapping service. And now we can just um, register that mapping into our mapping registry service register mapping service and we are going to register re, re, registry register this service yeah looks exactly like i expected and we cannot forget about register the service in the common module to do it we need to create a proper properties like providers and we are going to register mapping registry service and we are going to export also 
this mapping registry service this is a common module so we're going to use that common module in our location module and we're going to import common module yeah looks great okay we talked so much about DTO but we didn't create any let's do it let's create a file location .dto.ts implementation should be simple at this stage we're going just to export the simple class location DTO with a read only ID and read only name at this stage we are not changing the DTO so it's quite easy to make it read only okay abstractions are ready our DTO is ready so let's create an implementation let's create a file location mapping service location mapping dot service dot ts and we are going to export and it's going to be a class location mapping service and we're going to extend mapping service yeah, it should be single quoted yeah, now looks great and we need to implement inherited at mapping method and this implementation is quite simple we are going to use auto mapper create map and we are going to map location entity to our location DTO yeah this map is ready and remember to make this class injectable yeah looks exactly as we expect we are going to register location mapping service into the location module uh, location module we all already imported a uh, common module we need to also register location mapping service yeah this implementation of location mapping service was trivial it's it will not always be mm, i will show you shortly in one of the next few lessons why mappings might be needed some real use cases might help you to understand the need of DTO let's stop here to not prolong this lecture we've created the basic functionality of our mappers in the next part we'll use our implemented mappings see you in just a minute hi and welcome to the second part of this lesson in this lesson i'm gonna transform entities into dto let's have a look at the agenda of the second part we'll do the changes in location controller we'll do the changes in the template and create postgres uid extension finally we are going to start the application okay let's change the location controller we should start we should start our um, we should start our changes from removing this uh, location list DTO we should move it to the separate file let's name it location 
list dto.ts and yeah we can copy it somehow and we will need this prefix i and we're going to export that interface it's not going to be the list of strings it's not going to be an array of strings it's going to be an array of location dto yeah. and here we need to change that yeah looks great we have location list dto and location let's go back to the controller we don't need it more we just need to import such dto okay uh, we can finally do the changes in the controller uh, we can change the constructor to addition additionally inject um, location mapping uh, not location mapping uh, mapping registry service here mapping uh, registry service registry service yeah looks okay and we are going to use that mapping registry service uh, to do it we are going to use public async method list location to return a promise for a location list DTO yeah we are using the persistence layer persistent layer the persistent layer is communicating with the database asynchronously so we need to handle that asynchronous uh, way of uh, rendering our application we'll uh, use our asynchronous uh, method list so to do it we need to await for that list await uh, await is a kind of uh, sugar over the promises but makes the application even more readable now we will need to map all the DTOs so we'll get our DTOs to a constant and it's going to our DTOs are, are our mapped location so we are going to map our location and we are going to map this into the location DTO and we are doing it we will do it using the location name we are going to map location name into the location DTO name and finally we are going to map location object yeah looks great and we need to return details instead of uh, locations but let's keep this name locations yeah let's create additional uh, space for return place uh, placement and yeah everything looks great we'll also need to do a small small change in the handlebars template let's go to our handlebars list template and we'll need to indicate this dot name last but not least in the last lecture we used uid type as an id postgres need to have UID extension to properly handle UIDs 
to create such extension, we should go to PostgreSQL, Postgres terminal using PSQL. Mm. Let's change the database to locations. To do it, we should use the command connect locations. Yeah. And let's create a proper extension. Create extension if not exist. And it's going to be UID or, or CP is how this extension is named. I already uh, created that extension. That's why I had a notice that extension already exists. But don't worry. Uh, in your case, you will just create a new extension. So uh, we can check if the proper tables were generated. Yeah, looks great. I already created also a, a kind of fixture inside the uh, location. Let's have a look. Location. Yeah, the fixture is generated. Uh, we can, uh, you can use just uh, closer, cl closer, insert into location id name values, and in this case, it's going to be uid generate v4, and this function will generate unique id and we can choose the name and let it be nice location 2 yeah, and we just inserted the second location with the second uid so uh, let's open the application in the browser uh, To do it, we need to run this application. Let's run our application using the npm run start dev. Possibly something something might be wrong because uh, that was a quite long lecture. Application is starting. Nest application successfully started. So let's. Have a look at the localhost 3000 and there's something not bad not wrong it looks like there is a some kind of problem with our um, location name but we can simply debug it using our debugger we are going to debug NestJS framework and let's check what is happening. Hmm, might be here, might be here, or here, and finally here. Mm, okay, there is a mm, problem. Cannot find module mapping registry service mm. it cannot be found because there is a wrong uh, there is a wrong path yeah we are going to get that module not from source but from uh, the level up uh, from in the directory structure same with location map mapping and same with common module here any other problems i don't, don't think so 
let's try to rerun that debugger and debugger attached um, Yeah, looks like it's working and let's have a look uh, what is uh, what are our locations our locations are great objects so let's go to the uh, step into yeah we are inside let's go to our map method and we can check what happening here mm. we are going to return the volume oh, this volume looks strange but we can check what the auto mapper is mapping oh yeah here is a problem we passed an object as a class not like an object yeah, that was the problem. I think that no more problem will be uh, here. Yeah, we need to wait to application, wait for application. Yeah, looks great. Let's go to the second point. Yeah, there are DTOs, the first one, yeah, the second one, everything looks all right application is debugged yeah there are nice locations there are two nice locations everything looks working and that's really great uh, finally there were some troubles but you could find how to uh, how to use the debugger also and that is that this is the nice method of debugging our application i really like it thank you for this lecture I hope that I've brought up some issue, mapping issue closer. It's really important in enterprise architecture to use DTO. Thank them, we can achieve flexibility on the output. There is more work that needs to be done when we decide to implement DTOs, but we receive a lot of flexibility in exchange depends on the project it might be enough to work with entities or continue workflow uh, with dtos i decided to to do that to to do the dtos because i promised enterprise ready node it's a common enter it's a common enterprise workflow it might be really enjoyable in the future let's move to the future in just a minute hi Thank you for being with me and NestJS in this section. We've done quite a huge refactor and introduced a lot of additional concepts focused on persistent layer mostly. Please take a look at this picture that clarifies the borders of particular layers of the application. The persistent layer is focused on storing the data. Persistence abstractions such as repositories can be injected into service layer. Rarely we could use them in the controller layer, but we must force politics to create a service and refactor controllers if any meaningful business logic will be included. It's, mm, it might be more complicated over time, but the politics is up to you. I'm trying to not call repositories directly from controller because I have a difficulty in later control. In the next picture, uh, will show you that in fact all the layers can operate on entity. DTO should be accessible only in the controller. With such foundation, we know that controllers should be responsible for mapping from entities to format understandable for the final API. It's a solid tested foundation that keeps your business logic independent on API or other infrastructure and allow us to create an application following the domain-driven design rules. So focus on business logic 
first. We will focus firstly on business logic in the next sections. Unluckily, we did so many changes that we've broken almost all the tests. We will fix and improve them in the next section. See ya in just a minute. Hi! In the last section, we did a really nice job implementing the persistence layer. Thanks to that, we achieved nice separation between the particular layers of the application. We've created a nicely separated controller, we've separated services with business logic, and created a persistent layer. That was a really huge refactor, and we've broken most of the tests. In this section, we'll make them great again. This section will focus on fixing all the tests and show you the correct way to mock the dependencies. Sounds like a lot of fun, so see ya in just a minute. Hi and welcome to this lesson. We did a really nice job by adding the whole persistent layer to the application. Uh, it's not the end of our journey, although it was really fast, we need to slow down a little and fix all the tests we've broken and write a new ones to cover all the functionalities. We'll start from fixing unit tests. I divided this lecture to a few parts. Let's check the agenda of the next few lessons connected with fixing tests. So in the next few lessons, we'll run unit tests, install Simon and Lodash, we'll fix location.service.spec.ts, we'll create a mock helper.ts library, maybe not library, maybe it's just a simple helper, and we'll fix location controller.spec.ts. We'll create a lot of generics that will help us in the next lessons and in the future generally. So let's run our unit test in the beginning. To do it, we'll need to use the npm test command. Uh, as you will see in just a moment, the tests of controller and service will not pass. Yeah, the tests are not passing. Uh, so let's check what's broken. Let's fix them. Let's start from location service.spec.ts. As you can see, we'll require an argument and it's going to be location repository and we need to somehow mock this library. To mock such library, we'll use the uh, mocking library. To create one, we'll use Sinon. Additionally, we'll need Lodash in this section, so please type npm install save Sinon and Lodash at once. And it will install Sinon and Lodash. Mm, we'll also need typings because both libraries have uh, not included typings uh, and we'll need also to do the npm install uh, command to install types for Sinon and types for Lodash but we'll need to do it in the development uh, part. To do it, we'll need to create npm install, we'll need to type npm install save dev and it's going to be types sign-on and types lodash. Yeah, we'll install needed typings and we are going to fix that test. Yeah, I'm I, I would love to create such uh, lecture, lectures a little bit shorter than the last ones because that was really huge. So I think that we'll uh, finish our lessons for this moment. We'll have, uh, we, we've got the nice libraries installed and see you in just a minute and we'll fix this location service.spec. TS file. Thank you and see ya in just a moment. Hi and welcome. We are continuing fixing our unit test and we are going to fix location service.spec.ts. 
uh, let's start from declare what we'll need in before each section. And we are going to mock a repository because it's a unit test. We'll believe that uh, a plain object is a repository. To do it, we'll need to create a mock repository um, property here. And it's going to be a type of repository. Um, and this repository should be imported from type RM. Yeah, it's imported. And it's going to be a repository of location and it's be import it will be imported from location entity. Yeah, looks great. And we'll do the bleph. To do it, we'll create a plain object, but this plain object will be uh, of type, will be cast to the type of repository of location it's a bluff it's uh it's not a it's not an object of such type but no one will know that uh, except you uh, at least application will not know that so then we'll assign the find function to such a repository to do it we'll need to use object assign method to mock the find find uh, find function to a repository it looks great but it's still not a mock so we'll need to create a mock using sign we'll need to import such sign library import everything as Sinon is the proper way to import Sinon, and we are going to import it from Sinon. Yeah, looks great. And we'll need to create a mock. Uh, we'll need to declare mock, of course. Mock, and it's going to be a type of uh, Sinon mock. And our mock will be created using the method mock and we are going to pass an argument as an argument we'll use the object to be mocked in our case it's mock repository finally we'll create an expectation and we'll use it uh, we'll use the method expects to create expectation and the, this is the expectation of find method that will resolve to, to an array with locations. Yeah, looks great, but there is a problem. There's one problem because we'll, we'll, it's, it's going to be a hard, it's going to be challenging to create the locations so let's at this moment just fix the location service by including the bypassing the mock repository and our and fix the test by adding the method resolve because we are we are uh, returning this uh, empty array asynchronously and we are expecting that our list will resolve to that array eventually. Yeah, and that test should be partially fixed. It means the test should pass. Yeah, something is wrong here, I think. Oh, no, this test passed this one with controller did not yeah everything looks looks working except the fact that we are returning an empty array and we'll fix that in the next lecture see ya in just a minute hi thank you for the last lecture and in the last lecture we fixed the location service.spec.ts at least partially because we are uh, resolving an uh, repository 
the returning from the uh, value returned from a repository is an empty array. It's a uh, not usual case. So we will need to uh, mock some entities, the real entities. And to do it, we'll need to create the kind of location entity factory. And location entity factory might be not the best choice because we can create the generic factory. And to create the generic factory, we'll create a, a file in the common module. And this file will be named generic factory.ts. Yeah, and our generic factory will be a class, of course, generic factory. It looks awesome. And there will be one method inside, and it's going to be public static method create. And we are going to create a method that will be a type of generic, maybe maybe not generic. It's be uh, it's going to be just a type of the unknown constructor. And the second argument will be the plain object with any properties we want. So it's going to be an unknown plain object. And this generic factory will instantiate, will instantiate our, uh, our class do it we'll need to use uh, instance we'll need to use the constant instance that will be just the uh, instantiate class yeah, it's exactly what the factory can do but we'll also assign the proper properties to our instance and we'll use it and we'll use the assign method of object to achieve it. We'll assign the plain object to our instance. Yeah, everything looks great, except the fact that we'll not have the uh, type that's going to be returned. So uh, to have such type, because we don't know this type, we need to return the unknown type. But we can cast this unknown type to some generic one, like, like T. And yeah, that's everything we'll need to be done because we can we can't use this this type yeah it's not the proper typing uh, in a um, typescript word we cannot find as you can see class name we need to use the generic property to cast these types from from this one to something yeah, something different. In that way, we can cast the real class to an instance or the abstract class. So it's not a bad approach. Yeah, and I think this this is the everything I wanted to do in this in this lecture. And we'll use this generic factory in our location service and the rest of the application in the next lessons. Thank you and see you in just a minute. Hi and welcome to this lecture. In the last lecture we created the generic factory. As you remember we did it to create the real uh, test here to not return the empty array and we just need to use it. It should be simple. Let's import the generic factory and create a new uh, entity 
we'll need to use the generic type. It's going to be location that we are importing from the location entity. And we'll need to pass also the constructor here. The second argument, as you remember, is an plane. It's a plane object. And in our case, the plane object should have two proper should has two properties. Uh, it's going to be ID and it's going to be name. Name should be simple because the name is chosen by me location one. Mm. ID is a little bit more complicated because as far as you remember, we use the UID to uh, our as our IDs, but we can simply generate the UID using the npm UID library. We will use this library using the node console. I typed node in the uh, uh, in our terminal, and we can just require the UID and use the method v4 to generate UID version 4. Yeah, we've created the nice looking UID. Let's create the second one and let's copy this part to create the two locations. Should be quite easy and straightforward with our generic factory. Yeah, everything looks great. And as you can remember, we expect that the list method will return the empty array, but it's not the case. Let's check it. It's not the case because our mock repository will, will return two uh, locations. So we are expecting in reality that this match object will have the uh, two locations uh, also. Uh, there is also the other uh, fail. There is a fail with this path. Uh, good to know. There is something wrong with my editor. I need to check what's happening here. But now everything is all right. So we'll check if the tests are passing. Yeah, it's location controller. And this test is not passing because we expect the empty array and we have the array with two location. So let's just simply fix it because we are not expecting our empty array. We are expecting the array with two locations. Yeah, exactly like this. Let's do the tests again and the test should be fixed. Yeah, looks working. As you can see, the uh, mock repository returns to locations and the service returns to locations also. So everything looks great. And in the next lecture, we'll do some more cleanups here because this before each section doesn't look doesn't looks uh, doesn't look great. I think it might be more generic before each. I will show you this trick in the next lecture. Okay, in the last lecture we did the nice working location service.spec.ts. Uh, it's a nice test, but uh, we did a lot of code that potentially could be moved to some other place because it looks quite generic. Uh, to achieve it, uh, to make it generic, we'll need to create the kind of helper. In our case, it's going to be mockhelper.ts. Uh, and we are going to create a class export class mock helper 
and this mock helper will do the two things will uh, mock the uh, we will mock the classes so it's going to be a generic method mock mm, yeah some with some arguments and this mock helper will bluff so we are going to just bluff that uh, some object is a type of generic and we will pass the plain object plain unknown object as an argument and we'll just return this plain object as not unknown but as generic yeah this uh, this method looks implemented nicely so let's create a bluff with some mapped values so uh, let's create a bluff as you remember we've created some kind of bluff also here it's a kind of bluff and we are going to use this static method bluff and we we'll pass this generic uh, generic type and we are going to uh, somehow um, create a um, create an object that might be a proto bluff. To do it, we'll map the values of the object that will be passed here, and we'll pass here an object with key being a string, but the volume being something that I called an action. Uh, we will not uh, import this action because our action uh, will be in fact one of four simple cases. We are going to uh, create the four in interfaces because our mock can resolve and we'll resolve uh, we'll do the action resolve like here uh, using the um, using the property resolve but we can also not only resolve but we can also return and in case of not asynchronous but synchronous mock will return instead of resolve but we can also reject yeah and in a synchronous word we will throw throws uh, not throw throws yeah, and as you can uh, imagine, the type action will be just any of this interface. It might be resolve, returns, rejects, or throws. And yeah. And we also need to import the map values from Lodash because as far as you remember, we will create an object to be bluffed. Uh, and this object should have similar, uh, similar method created as the real object. So we'll need to uh, map the mocks map values of mocks 
to a functions yeah looks like i expected now we can pass such a blef to sign on to create a mock we did uh we did it exactly uh here this step is this and this step will be created in a moment let's create a mock and use the sign on we'll need to import everything as the sign on a sign on from sign on library sign on mock and we'll mock our blef looks great for uh, for every key that we will find in this mocks section for every key we'll need to create an expectation so uh, let's create exactly what I said let's create a loop for every key of that of that step here so of the keys of mocks we should define the expectation so in our case it's going to be expectation and mock expects of uh, of a key yeah it's this part mock expects find in this case but we'll we are going to create something more generic and now let's call the action like resolves in this case to call such action we'll need to check which action is going to be called uh, let's fetch that actions from from the keys of mocks and for example mocks find or any other key and we are expecting that there will be just one uh, there will be just one action inside so we can just pop this action and we need to just call this action expectation action mox key action what we did here is exactly th this we are going to do the action resolves with this volume yeah everything looks great and we need to return such mock bluff return bluff yeah and the mock helper it's uh, implemented let's check what we can change in before each section and we can change quite a lot because we will not need this part anymore we'll also not need this part anymore we'll need to just use the mock helper and we will return the bluff so in our case it's going to be mock repository and we'll need to use it from uh we'll need to get it from mock helper mock and it's going to be a type of repository with a generic location and we are going to mock the method find that will resolves with exactly 
this. Yeah, and as you can see, our before each section looks much smaller and I think more straightforward because we only use the one method, mock helper mock, and we are mocking in such case mock repository and we'll mock the find method of this repository which will resolve with such a uh, with such a volume. So in that case, this test should work exactly the same. Let's test it with npm test. Uh, I can see what's wrong. Stop it and test again. Mm. Yep, two tests passed. So I think that everything is working, nothing changed except the fact that we did something. Uh, I think nice because we lowered the number of code needed in every test section. Mm, now we'll only need this simple one, uh, one method to do the mock. Thank you for uh, this lecture and in the next section in the next lecture, we'll fix the controller and it's the last test, the last unit test to be fixed. See ya in just a minute. Hi and welcome to this lecture. In the last lecture, we fixed the location.service.spec.ts file and created a nice mock helper. We'll use it in our location controller spec.ts to fix it and use the generic cre created before generic uh, helpers. So uh, we will need to inject the location service inside the location controller and we will need also to inject mapping registry service inside. Uh, let's remove this part and implement it again. I uh, will also need the um, mock location service here and it's going to be a type of location service and we'll also need the real one um, mapping registry service Yeah, let's fix the path and mapping registry service will be the real one because mopping because mocking the mapping registry service uh, might be strange because we need to somehow map these objects and we'll need to implement these mappings again and do the same code twice uh, that maps the service one for uh, the real mapping service and one for the mock. I think that might be uh, might not be the clever the, the cleverest solution. So uh, let's do it in a clever way. Let's create a location mock using our mock helper and the mock method, and it's going to be a type of location service that will be passed as our generic mm, we'll mock the method list that will resolve with um let's copy this from here because it might be similar we need to also import generic factory 
but our uh, mock location service is created. It was really simple with our uh, mock helper. Mm, we we'll need to instantiate also the mapping registry service. To do it, we'll need to mapping registry service uh, create a new object of type mapping registry service and we'll need to create also the um, location mapping service that will be an instance of location mapping service and location mapping service need to uh, need mapping registry service as an argument as far as you remember mapping registry service will register the location mapping service and to ensure that mapping uh, registry service properly um, properly uh, location mapping mapping service to ensure that location mapping service uh, properly register the service we did that uh, mm, we've created this uh, this this location mapping service um, I think it's it's not needed uh, now but we can create the location controller that will be a, an instance of the real location controller with the mocked location service and we'll pass also the real mapping registry service yeah looks exactly as i expected mm, and now we can fix the controller test because will no more return the list of locations instead we'll create the list of DTOs and the first DTO will look exactly like this and the second one will look exactly like this and we'll also need to make it asynchronously so we'll resolve this list location and then we'll expect the mm, exact matcher finally we are going to run the tests uh, let's fi fix the paths also and do the tests And just a moment, everything should work. Uh, there is a problem, some there is a problem. Uh, should we turn an array of element? Mm, we can change this description because uh, with, we should return an array with locations, and location is not defined. That might be a little problem we'll need to import the location from location entity and do the test again yeah the location looks like b defined in some kind of global scope for typescript i don't know what is the location if it's not the location entity that's quite a curious thing let's check it Yeah, that is a kind of global uh, TypeScript state. That's a kind of curiosity. You can fix it just by importing the location from location entity. And all tests uh, are passing. Yeah, everything looks working. Looks like unit tests were fixed. We installed some nice mocking library. We installed Sinon. Sinon is really powerful thanks to um, implemented mocked helper. 
we will cover the 90% of mocking cases in simple and straightforward way. Our tests should look a little bit cleaner, look like uh, like fast it was to implement the mock in that uh, in that location controller that was really really fast. In the next lecture, we'll fix also the end-to-end -end test. So see ya in just a minute. Hi. Last but not least, we'll need to fix end-to-end -end test. It's the easiest test to fix because it's a black box test. Uh, our app behaves almost like before, there are just some cosmetically changes in the templates. Yeah, as, f as you remember, we changed this name to use this object locations and the property name. And templates expect a new object format from controller. Yeah locations DTO. So let's run the end-to-end -end test. npm run test end-to-end. -end. We are expecting that the end-to-end -end test will fail. Yeah, exactly. There are too many locations and the locations are different. Uh, let's go to end-to-end -end test. Yeah. We've got the string location one, location two, and location three, and we're expecting nice location one and nice location two. Okay, so end to end test failed. Let's change our object format. We'll remove the location three and we'll create an object with a proper property name and change this string to nice location one. And same here, name, it's going to be nice location too. Yeah, everything looks great. Let's run the end-to-end -end tests again. And we're expecting that end-to-end -end test will pass. Yeah, end-to-end -end test passed. Okay, all test passed. It's not the best test because such end-to-end -end test strongly depends on database state. We should ensure consistent state of database before end-to-end -end test, and we'll do that in the next section of this course. We'll fix this test and create more tests shortly. Let's see you in just a minute. Hi, thank you for this section. We fixed all the tests. We'll create a new ones in the next section, but previously I wanted to shortly recap the concepts. Please take a look at the attached image. Let's divide unit to end end to end test concept. Unit test should focus on the test of this single public method in mocked environment. I even removed dependency injection container to avoid additional testing ballast. There should be exactly one reason to change the unit test, change the business behind the particular method. Please take a look. Uh, dependencies of a tested service should be replaced by mocked dependencies. We can see the same here. On the other hand, end-to-end -end test is black box test. We are creating the request and we are expecting the response. Tests should not depend on internal implementation, only 